This video is being recorded directly into OBS in real time, wirelessly, no wires, using the selfie camera on the iPhone 11. Thanks to a new acquisition through Elgato. This is Elgato's new version of the Epoch Cam app. Really weird name, but some exciting stuff, and I feel bad that I've never taken a look at it before because I am impressed here. We'll take a look at it right after this word from our video sponsor. This video is brought to you by Nerd or Die and their new terminal cyberpunk themed stream layout. You've got alerts, you've got overlays, you've got a full layout to choose from, customizable elements, stinger transitions, and all the source files, if you wish, available to edit for yourself and change colors, change aspects, or render them out for YouTube videos. Pretty cool stuff here, and you can save 15% across the entire website by heading over to eposvox.gg slash nerd or die and use coupon code eposvox at checkout. So between the streaming implications that come along with using your phone as a webcam and beating out the otherwise usually pretty crappy webcam market, although check out my channel this week, you may feel differently about that. I've been looking for other solutions to use your phone as a webcam. I mean, I've made quite a few videos on different subjects, including one this week as well. Uh, but Elgato's also been interesting, interested in tackling that subject. I've, I've questioned them multiple times at CES and things like that, like why they haven't invested in a proper webcam development, you know, making their own webcam for streamers or something. Turns out their competitor did, but hey, whatever. But their stance seems to be that the best potential webcam is one that you might already have in your pocket, an iPhone, a smartphone, an Android phone, something like that. And so they have acquired the application called Epoch Cam, which many of you have requested I take a look at before. And that allows you to stream your phone camera as your webcam. And on iOS especially, it is pretty baller. So Elgato actually hooked me up with, a, of course, a key to test out the software, but two different iPhones to test out for the purposes of this video. Here we have the iPhone 6S, so you don't need to have the latest and greatest, you just need to be on a relatively updated copy of iOS. And then of course we're testing here on the iPhone 11 as well. Let's switch on over to the rear facing camera to see what the quality upgrade might look like there. Hi. <laughs> So now this is with the rear facing camera on the iPhone 11. So Epoch Cam is an app that takes your smartphone camera, does mostly auto processing to it, which I found a little disappointing. You don't have a whole lot of manual fine tuning controls over the software, which I am a little bit disappointed in, but then streams it either over H.264, NDI, or I believe another H.264 feed over USB to your computer. And then you can use it as a capture device in OBS Studio. So you'll want to, regardless of if you're using it over USB, you'll you'll usually, for a longer stream, of course, or recording, you'll want to plug your phone into power so it stays alive. And you'll need to go into your phone settings to turn auto lock to never during while you're using this so that it doesn't turn off the screen because that will cut the feed. I keep running into that in my testing because I didn't have that set. Now, there will be two different versions of the app, of course, a free and a paid one. The free one is mostly just a trial to see if you actually like the idea in and of itself or that it will work with your device because it only does 640 by 480, which might honestly be fine for a lot of you for a little square, you know, face cam in a stream. It's probably fine, but it does have a watermark, so you'll, you'd have to crop that off, um, <laughs> but doesn't have some of the extra features. Whereas if you upgrade to the pro version, uh, it's a $7.99, so $8 fee, but it's a one-time purchase. No subscription, none of that nonsense. You just buy it once, you have it forever. And it adds additional features, such as choosing your connection method, you can use your phone's microphone, you can touch to zoom, you've got some smart HDR features here on this iPhone, although I don't know that it's kicking in at the moment. It, it seems to be on this one. On the selfie cam, I was getting quite the, like, harsh hot spots, but on this, on this version of the camera, it actually looks pretty good. Pretty cool. And then you've got customization for the quality and there's no watermark. So you, you'll want to spend the eight bucks to get this if that's what you want to do. But what impresses me here is that I see no real reason. I saw some quality samples just side by side just to see there's not going to be a significant quality bump here, but just in case. But what impresses me here is how low latency the wireless is. This is the lowest latency wireless phone camera streaming app that I have ever tested over all of the connection methods, both NDI and through the app. Now, so see the cool thing about the app here is that you can either do it wirelessly using their app. So then you install their desktop application. And if you're using USB, you'll have to install iTunes on Windows as well. Um, and then you add it and it shows up as a normal video capture device. However, if you enable NDI transfer, then you get the ability to use multiple cameras at once um, because 
one sending over NDI and you just add it as a NDI source. And then you don't have to install anything on your computer site other than the NDI plugin for OBS if you don't have that installed already. Pretty cool there, but be it over wireless or over NDI on wireless, it is almost real time. Like it is basically just as fast as a dedicated capture card. And so I'm gonna put this side by side with a camera I already have hooked up directly into a capture card and show you how they sync up normalized for my audio here. All right, so here is my Sony a6400 run into my Blackmagic capture card. And here is the Epoch cam. And I'm just gonna clap. They are basically synced up in real time, which is absolutely insane because even using Newtek's own NDI HX app to stream over NDI, it is super laggy. Like there is a ton of latency compared to real time. This is basically happening in real time. My mind is blown. Now that's not to say that it's perfect because as you can tell, the quality is maybe not amazeballs. I'm using Elgato's ring light here specifically at the moment. I just wanted to test it out and I thought it would be appropriate, but it is 1080p 30 only and it's limited. I think the max bit rate you could originally set, they now just have low, medium and best quality. Um, but the max bit rate you could originally set is about 10 megabits per second, which isn't much. 1080p 30 only, so no 60 FPS if you want that for whatever reason. And I mean, it is a smartphone, so you get no depth of field or anything like that. And like I said, I keep getting this weird hotspot thing. But for a webcam, it's totally fine. Like, for most content creation, like, this is great. If you're just doing recording, then just record on your phone and you're fine. But for, you know, streaming here, for a face cam, this is pretty cool. And then you don't have to invest in a webcam. Like, if you are looking for a way to save money and you want a webcam for your streams and all you have is your phone, this saves you the money of needing to invest in a webcam. Like for most people, this is fine, especially for video conferencing and things like that. It shows up as a video capture device. I'll, sh I'll show on screen if it shows up in Skype or Zoom or anything like that. Otherwise you use OBS virtual camera. But like this is totally reasonable. That's insane. Now, if I set up the second one here, the cool thing is that it isn't limited to only uh, newer iPhones. This is an iPhone 6S, which is a fairly older iPhone, and you can use that as well. And the quality is also very impressive. So here's the iPhone 6S main camera, and this is running through NDI. It appears on the older phones, the latency is a bit higher over NDI compared to the iPhone 11, which is a little disappointing, but that's just technology increases as time goes. And you can see the phone quality difference is a little different compared to the iPhone 6 here versus the iPhone 11 but that's the natural generation. They've been really working on their camera quality in recent years, but it is still totally usable. And again, for a streaming face cam, especially not to have to spend more money or to buy a cheaper phone, it's a pretty reasonable solution. Now, the cool thing here is I can sit here with the iPhone 11 as my normal like vlogging thing. And if you happen to have another phone, which I realize having more than one phone is not necessarily a normal situation, but if you do have an older one that's supported by the app, and you want something that you can walk around with, you don't need a separate camera nor a wired one going to a capture card to do stuff like sh show stuff by hand. So I can sit here and be like, hey guys, I'm gonna show you what's on my desk here. I need to talk to you about this PlayStation mouse for the original PlayStation 1. I can show you this here wirelessly, handheld, be ready to go, and then switch back to my main face cam when I'm ready to keep talking. Really freaking cool. Now, the phone does get pretty warm when this is going. Uh, the iPhone 11, it's not getting quite as warm as the uh, iPhone 6S here is, but the iPhone 6S was also doing NDI instead of the normal wireless. Now I will put this side by side here with the view from the Aver Media webcam. Of course, I'm using technically different lighting, but you get the general idea. You can see a difference in quality. If you are looking for a proper webcam solution and you're just looking at your phone because webcams are crap these days, I just posted the video yesterday at the time of when this should be uploaded. Go check out the Aver Media webcam review because it's pretty cool. And overall, it's interesting to see Elgato actually acquire something instead of just making their own because I think this may have been the better choice because this was an app that was already like ready to go doing a cool feature and Elgato has made some software improvements and some UI improvements and they will continue to support it and integrate it into their software which keeps this whole ecosystem thing going of Elgato products and I made the whole video with the ring light how Elgato is the new Apple and that's basically what we're seeing here which is funny because this is now my first iPhone streaming experience as well.
Overall, it's a pretty cool app and solution for streamers who want to set this up. I've, I've had no end of requests this year for how to use your phone as a webcam or camera or whatever for Skype, Zoom, Discord, streaming, recording, content creation, any of that. And this is the perfect way to go. If you want, you know, if you're traveling or you have a small little desk set up and you don't want to invest in a webcam just for your Zoom meetings or your classes and you want to be able to use your phone with your laptop or something, this is the way to go. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did find it helpful, hit the like button, subscribe for more tech education and stream guides. I'm the stream professor, Epos Vox. Download links to the Epoch Cam app from Elgato will be in the description below. Again, I recommend dropping the eight bones on the page one because you unlock a lot of cool stuff here. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time.